In this tutorial, we will use parallax occlusion to add realistic surface details. For this, we will build a custom OSL shader and then compare it to existing methods such as normal or displacement mapping. So parallax occlusion tries to mimic a displacement map without actually subdividing and displacing the geometry itself. So everything is just done through the shader. You can see the result in here where we have all of those stones here on the floor and they really fit exactly to our camera perspective and some of the stones are even occluding the stones behind them. And they really look like they are coming out of the floor here. But if you check the edges, you will see that everything is just an illusion and it's just being handled here through the shader itself. So in this video here, we will find out how to implement this kind of effect in V-Ray. And it's important to know that at present, there is no native way in V-Ray available to implement this kind of effect. So we have to use some custom OSL shader in order to achieve this result. We're also gonna compare parallax occlusion to the more commonly used normal and displacement mapping workflow, and then find out which kind of effect to use in which kind of situation. So let's start first by gathering the required resources. And since V-Ray out of the box doesn't really offer a way to add this parallax occlusion mapping, we need to download a custom OSL. We're gonna do that through raccoon-artwords.de where you can download this nice OSL shader here completely for free. And I will also put down the link in the description below. Additionally, we would need to download a texture set. And for this, I'm gonna use Quixel Bridge here. And there's our own dedicated video about how to use Megascans asset if you're interested. But we need to download a texture set that basically includes at minimum a normal and displacement map. And then also ideally a diffuse map, of course, and a glossiness roughness map in order to get a nice and convincing result. So in order to compare our parallax occlusion effect, let's first build a more standardized normal and displacement shader. And then let's see how those two compare. So for this, I already merged in all of the textures that come from Megascans. We have the color, normal, roughness, and displacement map in this case. And what's important to know is that this color space transfer function always need to be set to the correct type. So for the color map that should be set to sRGB. And then for our data driven maps like normal roughness and displacement map, those should all use the none type in here. Then also additionally, and that step is optional, I just put this filter multiplier to 0.01 .01 in order to keep our textures pretty crisp while we're rendering that we don't have some additional filtering happening on the texture itself. So now we're ready to connect those textures into this shader. And I just added some reflection and an IOR of 1.3. And now let's connect the diffuse map and then also make sure because we use a roughness map that our shader here uses the roughness and then just connect this into the roughness slot in here. And now we have already something basic set up, but what we're missing is all of those surface details. So if you check the normal map, we have just a complete flat planar map in here. And this we're gonna first change by using a normal map. So the normal map we have to connect through a V-Ray normal map node then just put this into the normal map. And since we're using assets from Megascans, we also have to flip this green channel. If you wanna find out why, you can check that out in my Megascans asset tutorial. Then we will connect this into the bump map slot and then also make sure that the bump map here uses a value of 100 in order to show the normal map correctly. So now if we wanna check the normals in our render elements, we can see we have this additional surface detail now brought in by the normal map, but very fast you will hit a limit of what you can achieve with the normal map because in these kind of situations where you would expect like a huge difference in height between these stones and these kind of gaps in here, and it should look like these stones are really coming out and by this way they are covering some of the stones behind it, a normal map can never really get you this kind of result. So I can try to increase the bump map strength here to the maximum value of 1000. But you will see the bump effect just gets stronger, but we don't really have the appearance that these kind of stones are really coming out of the surface. Let's put this back to the value of 100. And then let's discover how we can use a displacement map in order to generate this kind of result. Now let's also disable the bump map completely because let's first try to get all of the details using the displacement map. And for this, I just select my geometry and I already have a V-Ray displacement modifier here placed on it. 
Let me enable this and at the moment nothing is happening because I first need to set up the correct texture. If you want to know more details about the V-Ray Displacement Modifier, there's also own dedicated video in my channel that goes into much more detail. So here let's keep it very brief. I just disable the filtering and then I just put the correct amount in this scene here. And then let's also connect here the displacement map into the displacement modifier. Once we do that, we can see that now we have a whole displacement effect going on where here on the edge, we can see that these stones are actually coming out and these kind of gaps are being pushed in. And I think we get a quite nice result like this. If you want to, we can also combine both approaches. We could add back our normal map. Like this, we will have a little bit more detail going on. If you check here, the stones in combination with this additional normal map, there's a little bit more detail. So if you want to, you can also combine both of them together. You can also blend the strengths here of the normal map. Like this, I think you can get quite a nice result. So now let's build our parallax occlusion shader and then compare it to this kind of normal and displacement mapping workflow to see what kind of result we can get. So now just collapse the shader we just built and move it out of the way so that we have a bit more space. And I created a new material that has the same kind of basic properties like this one, but it doesn't have any maps connected to it. I also disable the displacement modifier, of course, so that we can start from the same starting position as the previous shader. So now let's open the OSL map, which we downloaded previously. And this can be done here under the Maps General OSL Map tab. And then inside here, we can load the Parallax Occlusion map. Once we do that, you can see those settings in here change. And we can now start to connect this in the correct way into our V-Ray material. But first, we also would need to add the height map. We can load that into this slot here. And here, I'm just choosing the displacement map that we downloaded with Megascans. So using this height map, this OSL code is able to do some transformations on the textures that we will feed into this shader. But since this here is an OSL code, we can't really use the common V-Ray bitmaps. We would need to use also OSL maps in order to be compatible with this snippet of code in here. So the way to do that is to use these maps, OSL, and then this bitmap lookup node. And then in here, we can start with loading our texture nodes. So let's start, for example, with this color map. Let's just rename this here to color. And then also make sure that we use this auto gamma option for our color map. And then we load the other textures, for example, here, the roughness map. And let's make sure that for the roughness map, the auto gamma option here is off. And then let's load the map itself. And it has to be off because the same way like here, this one is a data-driven map. So we don't need to apply any additional gamma correction to it. And the same is also true for the normal map, which we're also gonna add now. And here we also don't need to have this auto gamma option here turned on. Now we need to connect all of those texture maps with our parallax occlusion OSL here. The way to do that is to connect here the UVW output with the UV coordinates of each of those texture maps. And then once we do this, we first have to add also a V-Ray normal map into here and then connect this one here using the color RGB into the normal map of this V-Ray normal map slot here. So now our whole texture network is set up and we only need to connect all of them here to our shader. And here we just take the color RGB connect this to the diffuse map. Here we will take the normal map and connect that into the bump map. And here we'll also use the color RGB and connect that into the reflection roughness of our shader in here. Now let's start the rendering and see what kind of result we will get. And at the moment it doesn't look like much because the effect is initially very subtle. But if we go into this OSL, we can choose a different depth scale in here. So let's choose, for example, a depth scale of 20. And then we will start to see some kind of effect already. And it looks like those stones are now coming out of the floor and they are occluding some of the stones behind them. If we go to much higher values, the effect becomes even stronger. But now we start to encounter some kind of render issues here. And it looks like there's some strange slices that are happening here. And this can be fixed easily by changing the max samples to a higher value but this will cost, of course, additional render time. So now these kind of like slices are fixed with higher max sampling, but let's still go back to a little bit lower value 
again back to 20 because then we don't need to increase those max sampling in here. And I think like this, the effect already looks quite convincing. We can then deactivate our parallax occlusion mapping. And here we see how the result would look like using just an ordinary bump map. And now if we enable this parallax occlusion effect, you can see that the result just looks much more realistic. So since it's purely shader driven, of course, the result is still an illusion. You can see here on the edges, for example, that the surface is not really being displaced, of course. And also here on the shadow, the shadow doesn't really seem to follow the shape of the stones. It just basically follows a completely flat surface and it's not really bent or affected by these kind of stones that come out of the floor. If we look closely, there is still some kind of steps in here. So let's increase the max sampling to something like 64 in order to get rid of those. So now let's discuss the question on whether this here is the better normal map or not. So as usual, the answer is it depends. So if you compare just from a quality aspect, of course, this kind of parallax occlusion mapping can give you a much more realistic result than just using a normal map by itself. But the more interesting question is to compare it with the displacement map and here I have two images so this one is using the displacement map and this one here is using the parallax occlusion mapping and I think both of them look nice of course the one with the displacement mapping looks better because you have also the actual displacement here going on and the shadow is affected so now the interesting question is which renders faster and you would assume that the one using the fake effect, the parallax occlusion effect renders much faster, but actually the V-Ray displacement modifier renders an incredible five times faster than the one using this fake effect, this parallax occlusion. So in my perspective, using the V-Ray displacement modifier is by far the superior method at the moment and using the parallax occlusion makes sense if for whatever reason you cannot use the V-Ray displacement modifier. My hope is also that Chaos Group will implement their own native parallax occlusion effect, which then hopefully is much more optimized and in this case, would be much more competitive to use it as a kind of alternative to the V-Ray displacement modifier. So that's my verdict on using the parallax occlusion in V-Ray. I hope that was helpful to you. If you want to support this channel, you can join my Patreon and download all of the scene files and watch some additional bonus content for many of my tutorials. So check that out if that's interesting for you. Otherwise, like, comment and subscribe and see you in the next tutorial.